Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another review. Today, we are looking at A7 III versus the A7R III. Now, this comparison has been done many, many times on YouTube. You can go back and look for many reviews back when the, the A7 III first came out and launched against the A7R III. So why are we doing it today? Well, it is December 2019, headed into 2020. And what has happened is that the R3 has pretty much come down to the same price as the A7 III, meaning I picked up the A7 R3 about $1740 off of B&H used, uh, which I could probably sell right now for about $1600, $1500 um, on eBay, the A7 III. So we're really, really close in price. So this is the A7R3 here. I picked it up on B&H. Again, I want to give a shout out to B&H. Now, again, I'm not sponsored by this at all. Uh, I wish. So B&H, if you're watching and you want to send me something to test, absolutely. Anyway, I got this one, um, again, for $17.40, um, rated an eight. Now, eight had me a little bit worried that it was not gonna be that great or it could be pretty damaged. Or scratched up the kind of stuff that we damage but scratched up I picked up an RX 100 mark 7 I picked up all my a6000s I had so pretty much any camera that I buy tends to go to B&H used just because of the price and that warm fuzzy you feel versus eBay buying a very expensive camera which I know that if I have an issue with B&H I can easily return it which I'm still thinking about returning this guy right here comparing to my A7 III. We'll get into that here in a minute. So, price comparison wise, these are very close again. 1740 used. You could buy this one new, probably at the same price. A7 III new, A7 R3 used. That price is pretty much equal if you do your good shopping and look around and find the best deal. Let me just give you, before we get into the, the comparison of photos, uh, I want to give you my thought process of why am I doing this, right? My main video camera tends to be the RX100 Mark VII. I like the, the small nature of it. I like the, I have a small gimbal for that camera, the Crane M2, you might have seen that video. But that's my go-to video style of camera, which I'm actually filming on right now. I had the Weeble S, and you saw some videos on that with the big camera. Um, but I don't, as of right now, I'm not doing anything professionally, big time stuff. Now I am, may dab into a house flip here, where I, which is, a, may film a whole series of this guy flipping a house, which is something I've never done before. So that may lead to something different down the road. But for right now, my camera video stuff is basically kids soccer games, dance recitals, I've done stuff for the dance recital, just voluntarily film them, take photos for them, give them to, to the dance company, that kind of thing. So I've gone from the APS-C line in Sony to finally moving to the A7 III. And then you always wonder, what is next? And I was happy with this guy. I am still happy with this guy for photo. But I am a cropper. I'm a cropper. I also I punch in. I have the 70-200 F4. I love that lens. Uh, of course, I would love the 2.8, but so would anybody else. So it comes down to price. But I tend to crop in a lot. And when I cropped in on some of the outdoor, beautiful weather photos, of, they were gorgeous. But when I cropped in, I did see start seeing where it started getting grainy, imperfections, um, not really that clear, that kind of stuff, even with the A7 III. So I've always wondered what this guy is gonna give me with almost twice the megapixel count. And I expected a lot from this guy when I did get it in the mail. I thought, here we go. I got the best of the best, right? For image quality. Not so black and white between these two. Long story short, before we get into all of this, it's a little bit better, but nothing to go, oh my God, that's definitely the R versus the three. I did see right off the bat that the three, the A7 III, did have tend to be more in focused in, in multiple places. And I'll show you some of the focusing mass later on, the two photos. I did like uh, 
the image quality on this guy, of course. I did punch in. I did felt that the images were a little bit smoother um, when you punch in, when you crop in. So I am still leaning toward the R and selling my A7 III. I go back and forth because I know this guy is better for video. And now while I was talking before about video and the RX being my main camera, this tends, these cameras would tend to be just mainly my photo camera. I'll do a little video if I, especially with the 70 to 200, great video for slow motion, great stabilizer on that thing. But uh, walking around with the, these cameras, you really need a gimbal to make it stabilized, which I sold and no longer have which I don't regret because I didn't think I would ever would use that big setup. So I'm happy with my setup right now with the RX100 7 as my main video camera. The big guy full frame is my main photo camera. So if you're in the market, the A7 III, I still find hardly much fault with this guy. I do find also some of the images to be a little bit brighter. Maybe it's because of the better ISO quality of it. I do find I get some more dynamic range out of this guy. And I have more confidence when I take the photo that when I crop in, I'll get the best that I can get. And that's kind of what I'm kind of leaning toward. Maybe because it's new for me, and I always want to, ex I get excited experimenting with new gear. Maybe that's an issue, whatever. Uh, but I think I'm probably going to stick with the R and just give that 100% whirl for a while and see how that goes. And then sail the A7 III. Now, that doesn't mean that they, they this r is better than this guy if you could do a lot of bit of both if you could do a lot of video and a lot of some photos here and there i recommend the a7 III. but i am a cropper so what that means is this let me put this guy out of the picture for a second my little loop here what this benefits me for and as i did see some image quality difference is that if i go to aps-c mode and i punch in using whatever lens I have to get a better zoom, I'll get a better image. I'll get a higher pixel, pixel count versus the A7 III because I'm going from 42, I think you're getting cuts into around 18 to APS-C look, which we're in 24 and then cuts to like around 12 or 11. So that is kind of why I am still going to lean toward the R is the ability to crop and to punch in APS-C I do it all the time I don't have a huge of course I would love to get a better lens maybe a hundred to 400 but I need to start getting paid for these photos to, in order to justify that all right so let's end this part and we're gonna run over to the computer and I'm gonna show you some different images that I played with what it's gonna come down to is a slight bit difference I don't see much of a Yes, that is the R and that is the, that is the A7 III. I can totally tell when you crop in. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, stick around. Uh, please subscribe and like. Helps out the channel. All right, let's run over to the computer. So, all right, guys. We're first up, our first image. Um, difference is the ISO is a little bit higher on this one, but I just mainly I want to show I was focusing in on this right here. I am initially not going to tell you which one is which, um, but... I will let you look at these for a second and you can determine who, which one is the R and which one is the three. A little bit closer. All right, they're both not that great. You can kind of see it's a little more pixelated right here and just blurry, but less pixelated. All right, guys, this is a photo of an obvious a post on my back deck. Both shot at ISO 400, one five hundredths of a second at 1.8 with the 85 millimeter lens, prime lens. We have the A7 III is on the right and the A7R is on the left. You can see down here there's an R and this is the three right here. All right, so we're gonna zoom in on these photos. I'm gonna try to shoot the little hole and we can deep dive into this. So, at the initial look, you're like, are you kidding me? No, no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> this is what we're looking at here. Uh, 
you can look right at the water drops right here on the right side and come over to the left side and you can kind of go back and forth and tell which drops do you like which one looks a little more real and I'm just having a smoother feel on the left versus a crisper feel on the right but that's probably a judgment call let's look up at the top here if you see anything different with the edges to match up a little bit. The, uh, <coughs> the way they focused around here, the A7 III looks sharper on the edge than this edge right here going up. Alright, let's get let's get in the hole. <coughs> Alright, so we cropped into the hole um, the best as we can. Again, I'm looking right at the edge here and here, and it's pretty much a draw, guys. I don't find too much to be any aha in this photo. So, given that, I would say the A7 III could win this round because the R should have won. But let's go on to the next. All right, we have ISO 50. We have 800. Both F4 and both 200 millimeters. All right, so we are matched up. When I uh, did focus, I put my focus box right here on the K on each one. So and it's a little bit dark, but uh, we'll keep it that way for now. It will bump up the shadows here in a second equally. All right, let's focus here right on the end of the K and see if we see it. Again, the A7 III seems to be a little bit brighter with its ISO. Even though we're both matched up, it seems to be a little bit brighter up in here. And the picture profile, we're both the same, so we're on natural at all zeros. Let's crop in a little bit more the edge of this sign to see if we see anything different. Nope. I do not see much looking in here and I'm guessing just from the brightness that this is the three and this is the R but we'll hold on and compare something else before we brighten the screen I think I'm liking what I'm seeing right here this looks cleaner than that but let's brighten up the image on both so we're matched up with our brightness and shadows on the two and this is the kind of stuff that I would am making me happy this looks a lot cleaner here um, this looks blurrier you can see around the bolt itself we're getting um, more pixelated right here this edge right here in this corner where it's chipped off looks a lot cleaner right here versus right there so this is the kind of result that I'm looking for when it comes to, is it worth it? So I'm seeing some difference. Now, of course, I am, when it comes to this far away, right? Different. It's not going to make a difference. If you're, especially if you're doing stuff like for YouTube or Instagram or family pictures, but it's just showing me that I can crop in and still retain more detail on the R versus the three. For in my head, you may not care, which is your prerogative, and this is why we do all this stuff, is it's fun, um, but, uh, but I care. Any chance we can read this number from the fence? It's like a five. I don't know if the numbers are backwards on this thing, but if it's a five or whatever it is, it looks cleaner. So I like the image on the R on this picture a lot better. All right, let's take a look at one more. Or All right, this image here, uh, a little bit dark. We'll brighten it up here in a sec. Um, right away, I'll tell you, this is a, obviously you see, this is the R, and this is the A7 III. I focused on the address, so let's go ahead and crop in. All right, 
We cropped in here to 413. We're going all the way on the number because that was our focus point. Anyway, here's our two differences. This one looks clean. I can see the screws pretty well and they looked a little bit blurred out on these two. The number itself looks a lot cleaner, around, smooth around the edges, and this looks pixelated around here. So this is what you're paying the money for. So I would like to see the Sony a7R 4 versus a 3 when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, where, where are we going from 42 to 60? So just a little bit. All right. Well, guys and gals, I appreciate you watching. If I hope this maybe either made up your mind either way, it could go either way. You could care not one bit about that difference or you do care and you like can justify whether I go for the R or for the 3 since the price nowadays are very close to each other. If you can find a deal out there on the R3, I would be careful about the A7 III because once the A7 4 comes out, then that 3 is going to drop in price, of course. Right now, the R is dropping because a lot of folks are interested in the A7 R4. So the 3, of course, is dropping. So if you're interested, I'll leave the link on probably eBay. I may try to sell it locally first, but the link's out there. That's where I'll be selling it. Great camera, a great condition. I think it's only like um, 12,000 or maybe 13,000 shutters on it. So I hope this helps out. Any questions, leave it in the comments below. But otherwise, you guys have a good day. And we'll see you on the next one. Go Tigers.